Hello YouTube, Sidekick here back with another installment of It's Not You, It's M.E. My occasional series of videos about using the Mission Editor. In DCS, this is the third installment uh, of a series on how to use scripting in DCS. Uh, if you haven't watched the first two videos, you might want to go and do that, as this might make a little bit more sense if you have watched those videos. So uh, we've taken it pretty slow so far. We're going to pick up the pace a little bit in this episode. Uh, before we do that, though, I need to ask a little bit of indulgence from you. I had made a promise in the last video I made, the Devotion River Bridge attack. Um, I had said that in the next one of these Mission Editor videos, I would show you how I had done that, and uh, specifically how I had enhanced the rockets in that uh, video so that they could actually take down a bridge. But then uh, when I went back and looked at how far I had gotten in this series, I realized I wasn't ready to start talking about event handlers yet. And event handlers are what you need to know to be able to make that script work. So uh, I wanted to cover a few things before we get into event handling. And I'm going to do that in this video. So I hope you'll bear with me if we just go back just a little bit, cover a few more things before we get to event handling. So let's pick up where we left off in the last couple of videos. In the last two episodes, we learned a little bit about writing Lua code and calling it from the trigger system in the mission editor. Learned a little bit about object-oriented orient programming, which is uh, what Lua is. Uh, and then we wrote some code and had the trigger system call it, and that code actually did some calculations and presented some information to us uh, on screen. A lot of that is stuff that we probably could have done with a trigger system, but it's actually a little bit easier um, using Lua code, and hopefully that's been obvious from the stuff we're doing. But we haven't really done anything to construct ourselves a mission that we could fly. Basically, all the code we have done so far has just spawned an enemy unit at a random location, and then we showed how we could write a Lua function that would allow us to calculate the range from that target to a friendly plane. In this case, it was an OV-10 Bronco. Uh, so today, uh, we're actually going to use what we know about Lua to make a mission we can actually fly. So here's how it's going to work. We're going to have the Bronco spawn in like we did before. Then we'll have the enemy spawn in to one of its random locations. The Bronco will keep flying in the general direction of the unit, and when it reaches a set distance away, we're going to use the Lua code to give the Bronco an order to go ahead and mark the target with WP. Now, that's going to be the first thing we figure out how to do, and then after that, we're going to put a strike aircraft in the mission, and this will be an A4, and that'll be the one that the player flies. So the Bronco will fly in, it'll mark the target, and then we will fly in flying our A4, we'll find the mark, attack it, and see if we can actually destroy the enemy outpost. So let's take a look at how we're going to do that. Okay, so here is our Bronco. Uh, that's pretty much the same as what we had last time. Go over here and take a look, and we will find that we have a Bronco armed with two rocket pods, and those rocket pods are going to contain WP rockets. So we will be all set up to figure out Let's check, make sure it's WP, that's right. So uh, so we've got an aircraft uh, that we can use as a forward air controller aircraft. It's going to be able to mark the target. So what we actually need to learn how to do now in Lua is uh, learn how to actually give orders to a unit. So you can see here's the trigger structure again. doesn't look that much different. Uh, we've added a few more flags. We'll see how we use those inside the code. Uh, and basically, what we're basically going to do the same thing. We're going to spawn it, and then we're going to call a different function this time, this one called check range. That's the one where we're actually going to issue the command to the Bronco to tell it to engage the target. So let's hop out and take a look at the Lua code and see how we do that. Okay, so let's just bring up Zero Brain and uh, Chrome here where we have our Hoggett reference. The zero brain, the Lua file that it's showing is this one called check range A, which is the file that we call after the unit, uh, the enemy unit has spawned in. So the enemy unit is only going to spawn once. And then once it does that, we're going to call this uh, Lua script file. And what it's going to do is it's going to calculate the distance between the Bronco and the enemy unit, same as it did last time. And the only difference is that when that uh, range gets less than our engage range, which we've set to 8,000 
get meters here. When it gets less than that, then we're going to call something. Eventually, if you follow all this all the way down, we're going to call this long uh, statement here. Uh, and the heart of that, there's two things in here. There's a get controller method, and then there's a set task method, and it's going to use a variable called engage, which is something that we created up above here. So let's go over to hog it and see what we're doing there. So we're going to do a group get by name. You'll remember that. So this is going to generate an instance of a group. So here we have a, a group that has a method called get controller. Uh, and essentially all it does is it returns the controller of a specified object. So, well, what does that mean? Well, um, when you return the controller, there's a bunch of different controls that you can, um, essentially commands that you can give to a unit, one of which is set tasks. So once we have a controller, controller has a method called set task. So we call set task. We need to pass it a table, which is the task table. In, in our case, we're calling that engage. What does it consist of? I'm just going to, uh, what does it consist of? It consists of uh, an ID, which is bombing. So let's take a look at bombing. And then you can see all of the things that we have to pass the controller the set task controller, we have to pass it all of this information in order to tell a unit to attack a target on the ground. So we're going to give it the target point, uh, which is unit lock.x, unit lock.z. And then what I've done here is I've actually added a random factor. You can work it out, but essentially what this means is that the shot is going to be plus or minus 25 meters in both x and z from the center, uh, from the target point. So we're not going to mark the target completely accurately. Um, so that just adds a little bit of randomness. Um, the weapon type, you'll have to take my word for it. This is a WP rocket. Um, we're going to fire one of them. We're only going to attack once. Um, and that's all we're going to do. And uh, we have to give it the target altitude so that it can be accurate. So we can uh, construct all of that into a table called engage. We pass engage to the set task method for the controller method for the group. Um, and then that will cause the uh, Bronco to actually uh, decide to attack the target. Uh, when it does that, we'll get a message on uh, screen that says that the target has been assigned. And then we're also going to set the user flag spawn to false, which will basically keep this from continuing to run once we've actually um, uh, acquired the target. Um, in the meantime, every time it goes through this uh, if then else statement and finds that it's not close enough, it's going to say no target assigned. So let's go take a look at what that looks like when we actually run it. Okay, here, so we are loading the mission. Just a sec here, we will get our handy dandy OV10 Bronco. And there it is, heading in towards the island on which we uh, have an enemy unit. You can see that the enemy unit has spawned if you look at the messages appearing in the right hand, top right hand corner. But because the range to the target is more than 8,000, um, we're getting the no target assigned message, which is what we set the script up to do. So, you know, there's no particular reason that we had to wait until we were within a range. It's just uh, a, a useful thing to, you know, demonstrate how we can use a calculated value that the Lua script is calculating to actually drive an event that happens uh, in the mission. And uh, that's all we're trying to do here is show that we can actually do that. So we're getting closer and closer every time uh, it's still more than 8,000. We get a no target assigned uh, message. But as soon as it gets under 8,000, you're going to see the OV-10. There you go. The OV-10 has now got the target. So we stop getting the messages because remember we turned that flag off. And now the OV-10 is going to dive in. In this case, it was pretty much in a straight line, but it would have had to have been. And the OV-10 is going to dive in straight toward the target, and then it's going to fire a single smoke mark. And then uh, we can see how it does. Now remember, the smoke park is not supposed to be entirely accurate. It's supposed to land within about 25 meters of the compound, but not right on it. Close now, I think. There goes the mark. There goes the Bronco. And we'll just stay focused on the, where the mark went here. Fly down and take a look. There's the mark coming up. And if we orbit around uh, there, we can start to see the bunker. 
I think there's the bunker. You can see that the mark is not actually on top of the bunker. It's not in the middle of the watchtower. So our random target placement seems to have worked as well. And that all looks like it's working the way we wanted it. Okay, so let's pop back out. Um, now, uh, the last thing we have to do is basically turn this into uh, a real mission. If you remember, we're going to put an A4 on the screen. Um, and I'm going to add a few enemy units and things to uh, make this a little bit more interesting. And we are actually going to have to change the triggers a little bit. So let's let's just take a look at what that all looks like once we've actually got it done up. Okay, so here is the mission all set up. Now you can see we've added a bunch of units. Now we still have the Bronco coming in on the same path. I haven't changed anything there. But now we've added an A4 over here. And let's just... Uh, check the loadout of the A4. We've got a couple of gas tanks and then we basically have six Mark 82s on the center pylon. So we're going to be dropping six bombs from the center pylon. Now, as you can see, we've also added a bunch of units actually on the island and these are all actually AAA. Now the unit, um, the enemy uh, random spawn group is exactly the same. All we've done is just add a bunch of AAA units, some 40 millimeters, some 23 millimeter, pretty much all over the island just to make it a little bit more exciting. And then we've also uh, modified the trigger system fairly extensively. So the first thing we've done is in initialization, we've added another Lua file. This is one that you can download, it's called Splash Damage. It just basically makes our bombs a little bit more effective. I like to use it. It just gives us a little bit more effectiveness and make things a little bit more visually exciting. Um, the spawn event is really no different than it was before. Uh, other than um, we'll have um, the Bronco give us a message saying it's going looking for targets when the unit spawns in. And then we'll call uh, a slightly different file called check range B. We'll take a look at that in a minute. Uh, when the Bronco actually marks the target, uh, they'll give us a message that the mark is away so we can start looking for it. And then we also have a couple of uh, triggers in here that we'll just check to see if we do any damage to the ground unit. And if we do, um, then it will send us a message and tell us how we did. So basically, if we cause any damage at all, it'll say that the unit's been damaged or the target's been damaged. And if we do more than 60% uh, damage, I think it was, then it's going to say the target was neutralized. Uh, now, the one change that we've made to the script, I won't bother going back and showing the script file. It's all the same except... We've added one more um, if-then-else statement, which is to take a look at where the target unit is and to decide whether or not it's on the east or west of the island. And you'll see why that's important in a sec. Okay, so we're spawning in. Here we are in our uh, A4. We'll get ourselves fenced in here. You can see that uh, Firefly, which is the Bronco, is telling us that it's heading into the island to go look for targets. And now, so we just need to loiter out here and the trick is we need to be close enough that we actually don't lose uh, the smoke mark because they don't last too long. So we're going to be close enough to the smoke mark to pick it up and bomb it before it disappears. And that's why I added the little um, uh, code in, in the check range file to let um, the Bronco tell us whether or not it's marking a target on the east or the west of the island because it's just a little bit easier to to uh, shape our approach so we know we're in the right place so we don't lose the smoke map before, it's, uh, before we get a chance to bomb it. So, uh, still just waiting for the Bronco to tell us that it has actually uh, picked up a target. There it is. Okay, so it's got a target. And it is heading into market and it is on the eastern part of the island. So we'll know to look to the east. Probably want to get in a little bit closer here. Okay, he's saying he's fired his mark, so we need to get in close enough to see it. Come around here. I want to get too close or we'll overfly the target. So keep looking. Keep looking for that white puff of smoke somewhere on the left hand side, the eastern side of the island. Keep looking up. There it is. I see it just at the base of the mountain there. A little ways away from it. We got some clouds coming in. Just gonna have to be careful we don't lose it in the cloud and that we uh, get to it in time.
to bomb it. I wish I'd bring us a little bit closer to it. And I end up taking a slightly shallower dive angle than I would really like. I'm also flying right over the middle of the line where all the flak is. Not an ideal approach. Keep an eye on the smoke. Get it into a good spot on the canopy. Alright, roll it in. Lift vector to target. Pull it down. Roll it out. And pickle. And there they go. There we go. And there it goes. Alright, and we got a target neutralized. Looked pretty good from where I was standing. You can see a little bit of the splash dam effect damage effects there with the last wave. And speaking of the splash damage script, that's a good segue into uh, our next video is going to be about event handlers because the splash damage script is actually using one of those and doing a very similar thing to what I did in that uh, Devotion River Bridge video, which is going to be what we talk about next time, hopefully in the next few days or so. For now, though, this is going to be Sidekick, signing off.